Hey everyone, it's Allie with Bold North Frenchies. Welcome to episode 102 of some of the most commonly asked questions that we receive. Um, so I'm basing these basically off of social media uh, and YouTube and how many people message me uh, questions and a lot of you have the same questions. So in these episodes, I'm going to cover some of the most commonly asked questions and feel free to comment below and make sure you also subscribe to our channel for upcoming Q and A's. Um, the first one is about silent heat. So a lot of people are always very concerned that their female possibly had a silent heat because maybe she's getting to 12, 13 months and uh, she has not had a heat yet. With the French Bulldog breed, um, most the larger the dog is, obviously the sooner they usually go into heat. So if you had a Great Dane, for example, the chances of her going into heat at six to eight months is much uh, more likely. But with French Bulldogs, we have seen them go into their first heat anywhere from six months to 15 months. And it just all depends on the female. So chances are you did not miss a silent heat. Chances are she's just a late bloomer and um, just be patient. Um, however, silent heats do exist where um, a girl might go into heat and you might not realize it because you're looking for the most commonly telltale signs of heat, which would be blood. One of the things I encourage you to do is get in tune with your females. Um, not all, Blood is just one uh, factor of going into heat. They also get very swollen in the vulva area. Um, their nipples might get a little bit bigger. If you have a male, which is one of the best barometers of heat, he will be showing her a lot of attention. Uh, having that male is really helpful. He will let you know. Um, or also just maybe mood changes. Uh, maybe a little bit more moody, maybe a little bit more tired, maybe throwing up after she eats. All of these can be common uh, heat symptoms. So what I encourage you to do is if you suspect it, go do a progesterone test and see maybe if she is having a heat with the absence of blood. Uh, another question I get asked a lot is, what do I do if my dogs are fighting? Now this is something that breeders don't like to talk about a lot because um, it, it is a, a reality of having unaltered dogs and multiple dogs in one space. Um, and we have had uh, dogs that have gotten along their entire life and one of them goes into heat, their personality completely changes and you have a dog squabble. And so one thing that I would really recommend is having multiple areas for your dogs to be in so you can separate those that maybe aren't getting along during that time. Um, another thing is having some things on hand. So if your dogs happen to lock up and uh, get into a fight, you, we have a uh, bear blow horn that we will use to try to startle them. You also can take a cookie sheet and put it right down in the middle um, of those dogs to separate them at the mouth area. You also can throw a blanket over them. That startles them and they usually immediately unlock and you can grab that dog by the hind end. Make sure you're not grabbing them by their back feet and dragging them back uh, because uh, you obviously don't want to cause any hip damage or anything like that. Um, another question I get asked a lot is about nail trim, which can be really, really difficult with French Bulldogs, <laughs> any dogs. A lot of them just don't like it. Even if you've started at two weeks old, they just don't like it. So what we typically do is we put them on our lap with their back up against us and we wrap a blanket around them. We call it the burrito method. We wrap the blanket around and we um, take one foot out at a time and we use a Dremel and not a clipper. The Dremel is, um, it really gives those nice rounded nails um, and it also is less traumatic for the dog. Um, and we usually have a second person to kind of um, maybe just distract the dog a little bit, give a little treat, talk to them and make it a good experience. Now, if you happen to cut a little bit too close, um, make sure you have this on hand, um, the, the septic powder. This is something that is very, um, been around forever. It's a powder, you basically just drop the nail in there and it will clot the blood immediately. You can get it at Petco or PetSmart. Make sure you always have that on hand. Feeding pregnant girls. Now, when girls are, when you inseminate girls, you do not need to change their diet until they are confirmed. And we usually confirm about day 28. When they are confirmed pregnant, we will add a third meal for that day. So typically our, our dogs eat twice a day. For that pregnant girl, we'll add a third meal. 
pregnant females need about 30% more calories than non-pregnant females. We still stick with our raw diet. We feed uh, Titan Red, which is a raw formula. We don't need to add anything else to it. Um, we will add that Oxymate for a little bit of extra folic acid. And then finally, people ask me all the time, well, we have full fluffy studs, and they say, I have a non-carrier. If I breed with your full fluffy, will I get fluffies? And the answer is no. So don't ever let anybody tell you that you're gonna get a fluffy if you breed with their fluffy stud and your girl is not a carrier or a fluffy. So if you have a non-carrier, so she does not carry fluffy, and you breed with a full fluffy stud, you will get all fluffy carriers 100% guaranteed. If you have a carrier, a fluffy carrier, and you breed with a fluffy stud, you will have a higher likelihood, all of them of course are gonna be carriers if they are not visual. So the visual can go anywhere between 25 to 75%. You could even get 100% visual, but I would say right around 50% would be your chance for visual fluffies. If you have a full fluffy girl and you breed with a full fluffy boy, you're going to have a full fluffy litter. So uh, just make sure that you are educated on that so you don't, you're not disappointed when you have a non-carrier you breed with that full fluffy stud and you say, I don't have any fluffies. Well, you're not going to, you're only going to have fluffy carriers, which by the way, is a great way to get into the fluffy game. Uh, they're about half the price of full fluffies and that is a great way to enter that fluffy market by purchasing a carrier versus a full uh, and work your way into that fluffy game. So hopefully you guys found these topics helpful. Don't forget, please subscribe to our channel. Please share it with your friends. We do this just to try to be helpful and to be a resource for the community, be a positive res resource for the community, and do our part. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. See you next time.